hello everyone thank you so much to you who are watching live for Maxine Foster's artist talk and um, if you have any questions or comments please make sure to put them in the chat box or if you'd like to be anonymous please use the Q&A feature and we will ask the questions and say the comments when she's finished talking um, so I will pass it over to you now <laughs> thank you <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Maxine. Um, I'm, I'm an artist specialising in um, printmaking. Um, I draw inspiration from the urban and natural landscape, um, um, looking at cities, uh, street scenes, um, unusual buildings. Um, I'm inspired by the constant changes made over time. Um, focusing in on unique surfaces, um, graffiti, um, all day-to-day -day marks, um, and uh, crumbling, crumbling surfaces. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so, um, graffiti ice cream. Um, the work that uh, is currently being exhibited with. Um, um, Teb's Contemporary Gallery. Um, I started the work, it was a couple of years previously, um, and it gave me inspiration for this, um, this series during lockdown. And um, I was studying, um, a couple of years ago, uh, I studied for uh, an MA um, at uh, the University of Bristol um, and my daughter was studying for um, a BA at the uh, similar time um, and she rang me and she said oh, mum can we go to Bristol I want to go and collect some uh, rusty metal so um, we went off to Bristol for the day and the first place I wanted to show her was um, the, the transient graffiti behind um, Spike Print Studios where um, I was um, a member um, at the time and so we that was our starting point so um, this graffiti um, which changes constantly um, reminded me of ice cream because it was all dribbling um, the spray paint was dribbling down the walls and it was kind of um, pastel colors um, so um, we went off um, around Bristol, taking um, photographs, reference, and what um, what I tend to do is um, I'll take lots of pictures on my iPhone, and then um, I'll put them on onto transfer them onto um, photographic paper, um, a, a bit like um, a Polaroid, where I kind of document them, the date, the time, and and um, any other kind of information. Um, so these five pieces here are the ones that um, are in the Tebbs Contemporary Gall Gallery online group exhibition at the moment. And, um, and um, so um, I created these during lockdown um, when it was, um, it was really hot. Um, we couldn't go out um, apart from dog walks um, and um, we were ordering shopping online um, and kind of nice cream. <laughs> so cheer, 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 make uh, life a bit more cheerful at that, that point in time. Um, so um, these, these are all monotypes. Um, um, what um, I tend to do is um, I tend to use monoprint, uh, monoprint, uh, monotypes as, uh, as drawings. Um, so I will sketch, rather than keeping sketchbooks, um, although I do sketch occasionally in, in sketchbooks, um, I predominantly um, monoprints and monotypes on my, my sketches. Um, so these, um, these are um, um, produced on acetate um, and all the colours are inked up at the same time. Um, and I scratch into the surface and um, remove, remove areas um, if we carry on. Um, so the, this, they're, they're, 
the five are part of, of, a, of a series. So there are about roughly about 17 pieces. Um, and the th three pieces on the right are created using oil-based inks. Um, and I will reduce the, the ink so it kind of makes um, kind of um, more gestural mark making with white spirit. And the two on the right um, were created using um, water-based inks. So they're, they're reduced using water. And um, so, um, so here you can see um, some, some kind of like ice cream um, flavors really of the dribbling um, which was kind of, um, kind of, um, you know, sort of um, similar to the the graffiti um, behind Spike. So bits of the docks are in there too. So, um, and then there was um, um, a helter scouter, a temporary helter scouter, which also uh, gave inspiration as well. Um, so. The, uh, um, during lockdown, um, I created several bodies of work um, and also returned to bodies of work as well. These two are slightly bigger, they're 50 by 50 centimetres, and they started off as screen prints. Um, but I wasn't happy with how they looked, so um, I started using spray, spray paint, um, acrylic, and um, drawing into the surface surfaces. Uh, and these these prints here were the were the the instigators, the original ones that kind of gave me the the um, the idea to create the ice cream uh, graffiti. Um, I was um, um, kind of looking, a sort of kind of um, keen on tra road traffic signs and marks made by. Um, by graffiti letters. Um, this is one I was studying for um, uh, an MA, um, uh, multidisciplinary printmaking. And there, these are tank wagons, which also are from um, the Bristol um, dock area. So the, the base of them are, um, the, the, the previous ones were um, screen printed and these are are monoprints with using oil-based inks and then screen printed on, on the top. And um, I was very much influenced by the type and the, the numbers that were, were on the, on the um, tank wagons and in the graffiti at that time. Um, an important um, time for me was um, I applied to do a print residency when I finished um, my MA. And um, this print residency was taking place in America. And I wanted to push my boundaries, gain confidence, push myself to do things that I wouldn't normally do, like drive on the wrong side of the road, get from, from here, fly on a plane and get to a different country. Um, and when I got there, I had no preconceptions of what I was going to do. So the first thing was to drive around and collect images on my phone. So I visited downtown Petaluma, took um, street scenes. Um, I noticed some um, magazine pages, paint sort of plastered everywhere. So collated those um, as well. And just before going to In Coates, um, I stumbled upon the RO Shelling and Grain build, building, which is a, a corrugated tower of um, patchwork corrugated iron and I just fell in love with it. Um, so, um, and I also went to, the, to Dillon Beach to see what, uh, what um, material I could find there as well. So I went to uh, the residency armed with all this material. Um, the residency was run by, or is run, still run by Macy Chadwick, um, who was very welcoming. Um, we had a, a welcome dinner. There were two other people there at the, at the time. And, um, um, but I had, the, I had the etching room all to myself. So the Tuck Up Press um, and 
there isn't uh, an aquatint box there. So um, what I did um, learn how to use was is a ground called Big and Sugar Lift. So I spent um, most of my time because it was open 24 hours a day. So I went in pretty much, um, you know, all the time. Just went back to to the the hen house. I was, I was staying in in a little cottage called the hen house, which also very fitting because Petaluma is famous for its chickens and the tower. And uh, so um, there was this sweet little cat that would come in and say hello to us and, and he disappeared. Um, we were all a little bit worried about him. And one evening um, we, we heard this meowing and went in search of this cat in just outside. Um, in, it was quite dark and it was a bit that wasn't, wasn't quite renovated, but we, we found the cat in the end and, and uh, his owner was very, very pleased. Um, at the end of the residency, um, there was a, an exhibition where we could all talk about our work and there was a, um, a meal and um, we would, sorry about the talk, <laughs> um, give feedback um, on, on how we, um, we did in our residency. Um, this is some of the work. Um, uh, Luminous 2, um, that's um, an etching and that's inked up a la poupe, which is um, translated into English, um, like small doll. So there's like little um, areas that are inked up separately using, uh, I use card, but I think the proper way is to use little bits of cloth. And um, so that's all inked up on, on the same surface and then you very carefully um, rub it away and take um, a print. Um, and then um, with um, a, an acrylic plate, I made a carborundum um, plate, which is, um, which is the yellow ochre. And that was to represent the glue from behind the um, the magazines. Um, so created a few um, few images um, and um, the dairy factory. Sorry, I can't mute my talk. Um, the dairy factory, which is also um, etchings. Um, and then when I got home, uh, a few months later, lockdown hit us. Um, so I spent what time I had available in my basement studio, I have a, an etching studio. So I um, made etchings and Patrick Heights is, that's an, an addition um, on, on quite thick acetate. Um, that's a dry point with carborundum. Um, and then um, another project was to take the, um, the coast, um, Dillon Beach, which um, I researched when I was in America, um, and uh, I um, recreated myself after 10 years with the South Devon coast. So I, to, uh, my intention was to strike up a conversation between beaches. Um, so, uh, these are um, these are a mixture of carborundum dry point and collagraph on card, and then isolation is um, this is a series of three, and those are those are on acetate, so it's dry point and carborundum. Um, and the, the idea with these is um, the, the beaches are decaying and eroding and um, in, at, in Devon, um, the South Devon coast is just disappearing into the sea. And there's also a plastic problem. So um, I'm combining the plastic, bright colors, plastic um, with the erosion um, so um, 
yes, thank you. Thank you um, for, um, for having me um, in the exhibition. Uh, that's really great. Um, and uh, thank you for those that have come to listen to my talk. <laughs> really appreciate it. <laughs> it. It was really, really interesting. Um, I really liked seeing what artwork you have done outside of the exhibition um, and your residency in America. That sounds really fascinating. It was, it was, a, it was a real turning point for me. I think it, it, it built up my confidence and, um, and then combined with lockdown as well, you know, sort of carrying on, it was, um, it kind of, uh, yeah, it kept me sane. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question, the real question is, did Roger help you with your printmaking? <laughs> <laughs> he was very helpful. <laughs> Much quieter than the dog. <laughs> yeah. um, and I mean, it's fantastic. We've got quite a few questions come through. We did. Um, so we've got, what's your favorite printmaking technique? Oh, um, I, I'm not sure I have a favourite. I, I like to combine, because I use a lot of um, palimpsests like um, um, kind of erasure in my work. So I'm, I'm always, well, not always, but sometimes my prints are quite simple. Sometimes they're quite complicated. And when they're complicated, there's lots and lots of layers. So um, I'll erase areas and then I'll print on the top and I'll erase and print on the top. So it's kind of, it, it kind of, continues to build mm. so, it's yeah. really interesting way of working almost like how graffiti takes away yeah and putting yeah. on <laughs> <laughs> um and what is it that draws you to print printmaking rather than painting so like solely painting um i think because i have a print background um i started off as a graphic designer mm. uh when i left school i, I trained as a graphic designer um, and then, um, so I have a, a commercial knowledge. Um, and when I was at college, um, there was a print studio. So we all had to do printmaking and screen printing at that point really mm. grabbed me. And I hadn't done any um, etching because I was so focused on, on screen printing. Um, and then, um, yeah, so it was a, it was a progression really. I'm um, going from doing really tight, precise drawings of your um, designs to wanting to loosen up. I've always wanted to to move away from the the kind of like the rules and and kind of regulations and yeah. So that's kind of what took me into printmaking. And it's addictive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you can you can see the passion that you really do have in your artwork. It really comes through. Um, and oh, the, this one there is really, really good. Um, how has having a daughter affected your practice? Did you have to stop for a while or did you manage to keep going? Well, when, when I had my, um, I have got two daughters. When I had my first daughter, um, I was working in a graphic design company. So um, I wasn't really doing printmaking. Um, but then when I left and went into freelance and then that gave me the opportunity to then branch into evening class. So um, I would escape every now and again, go and do evening classes, which then when they got older, went to day classes. Mm -hmm. And then and then after the day classes, I, joined, I um, enrolled in, a, in, in doing an MA. So, um, yeah, it just grew. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a wonderful, like natural progression that you managed to do. Um, and how do you choose the titles of your artworks? I think my favourite one is the cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, be, with those in particular, I don't normally uh, name um, my work after food <laughs> but I think it was a mixture of the uh, the graffiti reminded me of ice cream mm. and because it was hot and it was summer um, summertime skies with some of you know, the fluffy clouds um, eating ice cream 
um, in the garden because we couldn't really kind of go out. Uh, it just um, it just was a natural progression to name them after after well they were made up names they're not kind of ice cream names I kind of made them up um, what what I felt they should be called. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you have mentioned quite a bit working during lockdown. Um, so it actually looks like you've thrived quite well. Um, yeah. <laughs> There were some difficult moments. There, there, it wasn't an easy ride, mm. um, lockdown, and it wasn't for so many people. Um, but I, I think every every spare minute I had, um, I would slip downstairs and <laughs> and just um, yeah, just do 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 some printmaking. Mm. And we've heard that Roger the cat was helpful in America. Uh, does your dog ever accidentally get in and collaborate with you? Um, he sleeps a lot. So apart from when he's barking, uh, he does join me in the studio and I have to be very careful not to trip over him. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> there could be a catastrophe. <laughs> um, but he, he, there have been a few close shaves actually um, there's a table downstairs by the window and so I put prints on there to have a look at them mm -hmm. and sometimes if a dog goes by he'll just he'll just launch himself <laughs> and so you know there's been a few close shaves that he might have had a you know got a few scratch marks on my word but it hasn't happened yet touch wood, <laughs> <laughs> touch wood. <laughs> um and you seem to bounce between oil-based um, and water-based mm -hmm. inks. Um, yeah. What what do you prefer? And is it because of, like the qualities that they give? Yeah, they're so they're so different. The oil um, oil-based inks give a really rich, deep, um, um, and qu quite um, not hard, but a, a harder. Um, a harder uh, result whereas with the water based you can get really soft very watery and you can you can just you know pick up the plate and it'll just just run down you can do that to an extent a certain extent with white spirit but it's not quite the same um it's much better with, with water based to do that mm. can get quite messy <laughs> <laughs> um, and What's your favourite graffiti that you've ever seen? My favourite graffiti that I've ever seen? Oh gosh, there's so many. There's just, there's some really beautiful, um, there's some really beautiful work out there. But I do tend to go for the kind of the, the grungy, um, kind of um, less, less perfect, um, graffiti so it's more the, the mark and the and the and the texture mm. um, that I tend to go for yeah uh, that's fantastic um, <laughs> I remember where <laughs> I grew up and um, there was this guy all the normal graffiti the, gr the grungy looking one no one batted an eyelid with just yeah. expected it but someone started drawing this beautiful massive bee on loads of different buildings and all of a sudden that was the um <laughs> the, the disruptive youth need to be stopped and <laughs> I, I love like just looking at the idea of graffiti like <laughs> and how it's actually perceived um and I see that you have put on Society of Women Artists online exhibition yes. um yeah so do you have anything coming up um that you want to just put out there for people to go and see Yes, um, there's a, an online exhibition on um, the 21st of September to the 21st of December, um, Society of uh, Women Artists. Um, um, and also um, my website. So um, I've got a section on there. I've got, you know, sort of lots of work, but I've got a section on there where um, exhibitions get put up as well. Um, and if you want to say hello, I've got my Instagram um, account and uh, my email address. So it'd be really nice to, to 
say hello to anybody that wants to wants to speak. Yes. <laughs> Um, I would urge everyone, please make sure to follow Maxine on Instagram and look through her website. There are some amazing things on the website and on her Instagram uh, that are so worth looking at. Some of it is just so fantastic. Um, yeah, <laughs> definitely do that. Um, and our next artist talk is going to be in half an hour at half seven with um, John Maloney. So please do make sure to watch that. And thank you, Maxine, for being here tonight to, be able to talk to us. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, and thank you for being a part of the exhibition. Um, it's so great to have you. <laughs> oh, no, thank you so much for allowing me to be part of the exhibition with all the amazing work that's, uh, that's on, uh, on, the, on, on the online exhibition. It's, it's, it's amazing. Thank you. I, I just feel like colour is just so needed right now. Everyone needs yeah. it for that little bit of um, pumping up the mood. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. More ice cream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and cheesecake. And cheesecake. <laughs> um, well, I hope you have a fantastic evening and I will see you soon. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you.